credit where it is due. That was a fantastic game of football at White Hart Lane. But for Big Ange, the honeymoon period is well and truly over. I have been saying it for ages. Anybody that would listen since day dot, I told you that Tottenham Hotspur are an illusion. They are an illusion. Anyone who believed that Tottenham were genuinely going to launch a serious and sustained bid for the Premier League title was a lunatic. It was all a myth, an illusion, a hoax. They are not capable. You know why they're not capable? Do you know how I know they're not capable? Because two League Cups since 1991 tells me that they are not capable. History teaches us about the present and the future. And Tottenham Hotspur do not have what it takes to launch a proper bid for the league. It was a wonderful game, though. You know, two clubs, both invigorated by new managers. One of them got it right. One of them won the game. One of them made incisive, brilliant, effective changes to make sure that his team accrued the three points. The other one, in my opinion, made a pig's ear of it. Big and got it wrong again. Tottenham, they lost to Chelsea. They lost to Wolves. And today they were as gung-ho as ever. How can that be a good thing? Can somebody help me understand? Help me comprehend, teach me, educate me. How can it be a good thing to go all out attack, four fullbacks, basically one defensive midfielder against a team that are potent, a team that are brilliant, a team that are incisive and it's in a team that has a player like Ollie Watkins who definitely knows where the back of the net is. Surely you play the cards you're dealt and you look to maybe shore it up at the back. You know, you... They won eight out of their first ten, right? Eight wins out of their first ten. Incredible. They've then lost two in a row to very beatable teams in Chelsea and in Wolverhampton Wanderers. And they haven't learned a thing. Today they come out of traps and they're gung-ho and they're going for the jugular and they have been beaten at home. It's a mistake from their manager. And remember, Tottenham will always flatter to deceive, but they will also always capitulate. Four games ago, they were top of the league. Four games ago, Tottenham Hotspur were top of the league. They are now not in the top four. And when I say that I believe Chelsea will finish above Tottenham, and I do believe that, people laugh at me. People seem to think that it's impossible. People seem to think that that is ridiculous. Another stupid Rory prediction. But I genuinely believe that Chelsea will finish above Tottenham. I really do. And this isn't about Chelsea. Chelsea are woeful. I don't know where our next win's going to come from, to be honest. But it's about Tottenham. Chelsea always finish above Tottenham. We are totally capable of finishing above Tottenham. And if Tottenham are the contender, we haven't got a problem. We will finish above Tottenham. I truly believe it. Think about it today. Tottenham were brilliant for that first half. Like, how on earth has it happened that we are analysing this game and Tottenham are on the receiving end of a defeat? How is it possible? They were magnificent. They were all over Villa in that first half. They took the lead, didn't they? That Lo Celso scored a brilliant goal, a right pile driver, really good strike. Everything was going rosy. People are messaging me on Twitter. Oh, you're, you're getting it wrong again. Tottenham are winning. And then what happens? Tottenham, Tottenham. Pau Torres scores a header at the most perfect moment. What a cross that was, by the way. Dougie Luis, take a bow. Puts it right in the perfect spot. And oh, obviously... Uh, Villa go in one all. Maybe they didn't deserve to go in one all, but they they made it work. They were clever and they went in one all. Now, this is where it gets very impressive from Unai Emery. He knew his team didn't play well. He was aware that everything had gone wrong for Villa in that first half, really, and Tottenham were destined to win the game. He wasn't fooled by the fact that his team went in one all. He didn't, he didn't rest on his laurels. He didn't think things were going OK. He knew that it was going badly. So then he was incredibly proactive during the break. And that is what a top manager does. He made some massive changes and they were really effective. He brought on Tielemans, he brought on Leon Bailey, and he basically won the game for his team. You've got to remember Tielemans has an assist. That is a manager. Emery won that game. He played a decisive, important part in the reason that his team have won the game. And as a result, Villa and Tottenham have switched places. Emery's side are now fourth. They are level on points with Liverpool. At what point will people start appreciating Unai Emery? I feel like I've been banging this drum for ages. I've been telling anyone that will listen that I believe Unai Emery is elite. Not quite elite as a top two managers in the league, but undoubtedly the third best manager in the league. Far superior to any of the contenders. Far superior to Mauricio Pochettino. Far superior to Ange Postacoglu. Far superior to Mikel Arteta. Not as good as... Um, Jürgen Klopp or Pep Guardiola. I don't think that's controversial. 
He is the third best manager in the league, undoubtedly. And he proved it yet again today. And he has his team level on points with Liverpool. And crucially, <laughs> look in here. There are a couple of points off Arsenal. There are a couple of points, two points off the league. Like, are Aston Villa in a title race? <laughs> look, I know they can't win the league. It won't be possible. But at some point, surely we have to acknowledge their brilliance. They are truly sensational. And Unai Emery has accrued what now? Over 20 wins in a, in a calendar year. Absolutely unbelievable. And Tottenham, I don't know where they're going to go from here. I really don't. You know, they have now, I think they've become the only the fifth team in Premier League history to lose three consecutive games despite going 1-0 up in all three. 1-0 up against Chelsea, 1-0 up against Wolves, 1-0 up against Villa, and they have lost all three. It is going wrong for them. It is massively going wrong for them. And we have to remember that they have Manchester City away next, which for most teams is really intimidating. But for them, they, <laughs> I mean, they get a result against them, don't they? But maybe not this year. Tottenham did create enough chances to win the game. In fact, they probably created enough chances to win two or three games. There was an awful lot to be positive about. I thought Lacelso was excellent. Kulusevski was good in his new role. He should have scored when he cut back and hit the post. Has to put that away. I thought that Gill was quite lively as well. But there are problems. And when you think about, ultimately, where it's gone wrong for them in this calamitous November, three games, three defeats. Ultimately, it's the loss of Ben Tanker. That's a huge loss. And today they're playing who? Lo Celso, Gill and Hoybier instead of Saar, Basuma, Madison. They're going to struggle. But today is actually about Villa. They got a statement result, a statement result that they needed. And it was down to Unai Emery. He found calm in, in that halftime interval. He made some decisive manoeuvres and his team are now Champions League contenders. John McGinn, absolutely unbelievable. Ollie Watkins, wonderful goal for the finish just off the back of him making a bit of a mess of one as well it's quite funny I was watching the game but I had the phone going and there was a lot of people sneery being very sneery about Ollie Watkins about what happened just before he scored the goal so no it was uh, it was brilliant but John McGinn you know turning defence into attack on the counter he is a truly brilliant player and this Villa team are going places serious problem for anyone who hopes to qualify for the Champions League I don't know who those clubs are. Say you're a Manchester United fan. If you genuinely think that your team have a chance of getting in the Champions League, Villa are a problem. They're contenders. Amazing from them. Absolutely brilliant. But remember, Tottenham have Tottenham. If you're a Tottenham fan, you know that the game is about glory. Isn't that ironic that plastered around the ground, the game is about glory, the game is about glory. Two League Cups since 1991. A joy. Thank you, Tottenham. Uh, I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up off the back of yesterday. And now, let's go see how uh, Man United get on in a bit. <laughs> 